Are you having trouble getting solid white backgrounds in your photos? I'm going to show you how to do it using the inverse square law on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com. Ask your own photo questions right there on that site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Also, I'm finally back on tour with Luke Combs, and I'm planning on doing more of my live concert photography workshops, hopefully this fall. If you want in, go to ShootFromThePit.com and sign up for the email list. You'll be the first to be notified, and we'll get a 24-hour pre-sale before the workshops are available to everyone else. So I hope you'll join me out on the road later this year. All right, let's get right to it. This week's question was sent in from Nathaniel B, and he wants to know, when shooting portraits, I have trouble getting a pure white background. I've heard a little about the inverse square law, but I'm not sure exactly how to use it. Can you help? Yes, Nathaniel, I think I can, actually. Thanks so much for sending in that question. I really appreciate it. All right, there are a few ways to get a solid white background in your photos. You do need, unfortunately, to learn about the inverse square law, but the good news is that you don't have to do the math if you really don't want to. You just have to learn to understand the concept and how to put it into use. Now I'm gonna demonstrate here in my virtual studio software called Set a Light 3D. You've probably seen me use this before and I'm gonna put an exclusive discount code down in the description below. If you're interested in using this to set up your own lighting projects, I highly recommend it. Now this is just a simple shot of a model in front of a white seamless backdrop. If your goal is to get a solid white background, it does make sense to use white background paper or even a white wall if that's all you have. You could still do it with a darker color like gray, but it's obviously gonna be tricky to do if you only have, let's say, a black backdrop. That's gonna be much harder possible, but much harder to do. Now in the software, you can arrange the windows however you want. I've got my full studio view on the left. I can see the image through my camera on the right, and below that, I have a top-down shot of the entire set so you can see exactly what's going on. Now the lighting in the software acts like constant lights instead of flash, so that you can just see it as you're working, but it's meant to be used for flash photography mostly. However, all of these concepts I'm discussing today work with flash or constant light, whether you're shooting stills or video. At the end of the day, light is light and it always travels the same way. So what I did was I picked the model and the clothes I wanted for this picture, and I put her pretty far out in front of that backdrop. For lighting, I'm just gonna use a single beauty dish, and if I turn that light off, you can see I have no ambient light hitting my subject. That's what I want, so I can control all of the light in the final photograph. Now my camera exposure is at 125th of a second, ISO 100, at f5.6 for my aperture. She's exposed properly for the light that's hitting her in this setup. But look at that background, it's really a dark gray, it's almost black, right? But uh, that's a white backdrop, you know, white backdrop paper, right? So how is that happening? Well, the reason it's so dark is because of the inverse square law. Here it goes, right? The inverse square law says that the power of the light is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Now what that actually means in real life is that light falls off quicker than you'd think it does, right? So these numbers aren't to scale, but let's just say that she's standing in this photograph six feet away from the light, and then the backdrop is twice that distance or 12 feet away from that same light. Now you'd think that doubling the distance would mean that the light hitting the backdrop is half as powerful as the light hitting her. But the inverse square law actually says that it's the inverse of the square of the distance. So if it's two times the distance, which it is in that case, six feet to 12 feet, what you need to do is square that number. So from two, it makes it four. Two times two is four. And then invert that. So the backdrop that's twice the distance away is actually only getting one fourth the amount of light, not one half. Now, if she was six feet from the light and the backdrop is 18 feet away from that light, it's not one third the amount of light. It's one ninth the amount of light because that's three times three. You, you square that and then you invert it. So one ninth the amount of light. That's a lot darker than if it was only half the distance away. So moving that light, that background distance from 12 feet to 18 feet goes from one fourth the amount of light all the way to one ninth the amount of light. That's a huge drop off from just what seems like not a huge uh, change, right? So back in my virtual studio, the light 
is very close to the model in this case, and then the backdrop is way back far away. Let's say in this case, it's maybe five times the distance away. She's six feet away from the light and the backdrop is 30 feet away. So it's actually gonna be 1 25th the amount of light that's hitting that backdrop. That's why the white background paper has gone almost black in this case. Now, if we wanna change that, what can we do? Well, we have to get it so the light hitting her and the light hitting the backdrop are much closer, right? In real life, what I'd do is I would move the model, the camera, and the light back towards that backdrop because it's a little challenging to move a backdrop. But for simplicity here in this software, I can simply just move the background up instead of having to move all three of the other pieces back. Now, what happened when I did that? Well, the background got much lighter. It's almost pure white. Why is that? Of course, it's because of the inverse square law. Now, again, I'm just guesstimating here, and this isn't at all to scale, but let's say she's still six feet away from the light since we didn't move her or the light, but now the backdrop is only 12 feet away from the light instead of 30. So it's only double the distance instead of five times the distance. The inverse of the square means the backdrop is now getting one-fourth the light. Obviously, it's not gonna be quite as bright as the subject because it's getting one-fourth the amount of light, but the background is way brighter than it was when it was 125th, getting it 125th as much light. So I hope that all makes sense. The bottom line is that it's all about the ratio of the distances, the light to the subject and the light to the background. Let me show you one more thing while we're at it. Um, I'm gonna move the backdrop back to where it was in the beginning. So the beauty dish light is still very close to her and that fall off makes the background dark gray again since it's so much further away. It's back to that uh, 30 feet away. But maybe I didn't like the shadows that I got on the backdrop when I moved her much closer to that backdrop. So how else can I lighten the background without putting her right up against that wall or that background? Well, I'm gonna start by moving the light way back further away from the model, as far as I can get it in this setup. Now, obviously she's gonna get darker and she's now underexposed. So all I wanna do at this point is change the exposure on my camera to lighten her up to get the proper exposure. In this case, I'm gonna move my ISO from 100 to 1600. It's now the proper exposure on her and look at that background, it's white again. Why is that? Wasn't it just gray a minute ago? Well, yeah, it's thanks to, again, our friend, the inverse square law. The light might now be 20 feet from her, let's say, and it's 40 feet from the background. So again, just making up those numbers, but that's a pretty good difference from where it was before. That's twice the distance from 20 feet hitting her and 40 feet to that background. Twice the distance, so the background is again getting one-fourth the amount of light as our virtual model instead of one twenty-fifth the amount of light from before. Even though the numbers are bigger, it's the same ratio as when she was six feet away and the background was 12. Now it's 20 and 40. So it's the exact same ratio. All we have to do is change the exposure in the camera to compensate because obviously with the lights being the light being further away, it's gonna be darker. So change your exposure to compensate either using ISO or aperture. I did it with ISO in this case. And the background is once again, much closer to the brightness of the foreground and it's gonna be white. Now understanding all of this doesn't just help you get white backgrounds. Let's say you're doing a portrait of three people together, maybe a band portrait, which I've done a lot of over the years, and each person in the picture is further and further away from the light. They may be standing relatively close together, but they're further away. If you get the light right up close to that front person, the other two are gonna get much darker very quickly. But if you only have one light and you want them all to be roughly the same brightness, which usually is the case in a band picture, all you have to do is just back that light up as much as you can, just like we did in that last setup in the software, and then lighten up your camera exposure to compensate. Since the light is very far away and pretty much the same distance away from all of the band members, they're gonna be lit with basically the same intensity. It's gonna be inconsequential how much it falls off at that point on each person. Now, Nathaniel, there of course are other ways to make your background pure white. Uh, that doesn't involve the inverse square law. The easiest one is just to add more lights, to put some lights on that backdrop. That backdrop. Just make sure you pull your subject away from it as much as you can so those background lights don't bleed over into your subject. You could definitely do it with just one flash on the background. I personally prefer at least two so I can get even lighting all the way across the, in the background. It's also best if you're gonna do that to cross light the backdrop. So the light on the left is pointed towards the far right and the light on the right is pointed towards the far left. By doing that, you hopefully won't have any hot spots, and it should be close to even all the way across that background.
Now, of course, like most things in photography, there are a lot of ways to get the same result and you just have to find what works best for you and the gear you have and the picture you're trying to make. Nathaniel, I hope that helps you out. The rest of you guys watching this, how do you all get a solid white background? Do you even think about the inverse square law or do you just kind of mess around with it until you get something you like? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember, if you are interested in this software, there's a free trial using the link in the description. And if you want to buy it after that, you'll get a 15% discount by using my promo code. That's all down below. I hope you'll check that out. I'm back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new question sent in by you guys. Keep them coming, please, at Ask David Bergman. If you haven't subscribed already to Adorama TV, go ahead and click that button down below. Give, a, give me a like, a thumbs up if you enjoy this. I really appreciate that. That helps me out as well. Um, I hope you'll join me right here next week. Remember, 10 a.m. Eastern every Monday. I'll be back here next time with a brand new question right here on Ask David Bergman.